aquaplaning is always a concern, especially with the high speeds involved in motorsports. Aquaplaning results from too much water on the road, explains racing driver Patrick Zimon. The tire is unable to remove the water underneath, so the car is left gliding and can no longer be steered or controlled. Back in the early 1960s, engineers at a famous British tire maker were already researching this awkward phenomenon. Both on the regular road and the racetrack, it was clear that tires had to be improved. Dunlop's Hubbard Werner says investigations revealed for the first time what is today common knowledge, that higher speeds have a detrimental effect on a tire's aquaplaning behavior. It also told us that the depth of the water plays a role, of course, as do the width of the tire and the profile. From small cars to Formula One speedsters, from city streets to race circuits, aquaplaning is spectacular, but also dangerous. Once it happens, there's little you can do. Patrick Zimon is all too familiar with the problem. He has over 20 years racing experience and puts the Audi R8 through an aqua planning test. Without the body, he can see the tire and its tread depth. By law, tires have to be replaced when the tread reaches 1.6 millimeters. When it comes to aqua planning, 3 millimeters might not be enough. This black line shows when the tire is worn down, for us, far too little. We're going to try it with a new tire, so more water, guys. Cloud bursts and torrential rain lead to a cushion of water forming under the tire, which in turn loses contact with the road. The engine power fails to take effect, and the vehicle goes out of control. In the world of motorsports, drivers can choose the tires with the right profile. Running on treadless tires called slicks, for example, they would have no chance. Rain tires, however, incorporate an asymmetric profile geometry that drains away the water. What matters here is having circumferential grooves that are wide or in plentiful supply to enable high flow velocities. To ensure this also works with the steering, the grooves are designed to remove the water with a minimum of resistance. The more efficient the profile, the quicker you'll be able to drive. But racing teams still face a challenge. The weather can never be predicted with certainty, and a major headache for them is making the right selection at the right moment. The wrong tires can see the driver fall off the pace, or indeed fly off the track. There are basically three different tires in motorsports, explains Patrick Zimon. There are slicks, intermediates and rain tires. Intermediates are for when the road is damp but has no actual layer of water on it. When it does, you need to put on rain tires, which get rid of the water. For dry conditions, you use slicks. A direct comparison illustrates how much better the rain tires perform in terms of maintaining contact with the road in wet conditions. The danger of aquaplaning is especially high around bends. The world of motorsports poses the toughest challenges for tires, of course. New technological advances that persevere under such competitive conditions are eventually channeled into the development of new tires for road-going cars. <laughs>